Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and welcome to week six, the second to last week of the regular season for MJ TV's Metronome League. Let's start off with our usual recap of last week's matches. First was the battle of the undefeated teams, the Bolt Strikers versus the Shadow Storm. Early on, the Shadow Storm took a loss when Karina the Chansey used Healing Wish. After that, it was a lot of back and forth eventually resulting in the Shadow Storm having three Pokemon up against the Bolt Strikers too. However, the Bolt Strikers Pokemon were much healthier, and that let them hold on longer. The Bolt Strikers became the standalone undefeated team with two Pokemon left standing. Next was the 2-2 two two Intimidation versus the 0-4 Dragon Knights. The Intimidation got an Oko right off the bat, but the Dragon Knights were much more dominant after that. Eventually it became just Yellow HP Chopper versus Green HP Gex and Yellow HP Paralyzed Sprinkles. Chopper was once again cool under pressure though, taking out Sprinkles, healing from Gex's Brine, and then using Spite to drop Gex's Metronome PP. Since Gex previously lost its Lepaberry, it was out of Metronomes and forced to struggle, falling to the recoil. The Intimidation pull off yet another comeback winning with one Pokemon left standing. Next was the 2-2 two two Leaf Guardians versus the 0-4 Entry Hazards. The Leaf Guardians got a big KO early, but the Entry Hazards answered with one not long later. After taking out Snacks, the Entry Hazards performed excellently, especially Mr. Dime, who held on for a long time with low HP and boosted itself to the nines. It eventually finished the battle with a stab plus two special attack blizzard that decimated the Leaf Guardian's remaining Pokemon, finally giving the Entry Hazards their first win with three Pokemon left standing. Then was the 2-2 two two Mist Mavens versus the 2-2 two two Hive Mind. This was the most one-sided battle I have ever seen. Hopper the Politoed got imprisoned on the first turn of the battle and stayed around for the rest of it, but that wasn't all. Hopper also landed a Fisher, and the Mist Mavens got imprisoned again, and also froze Luna the Clefable, who stayed frozen for a disgusting amount of turns until it was KO'd. The Mist Mavens decimated the Hive Mind without a single Pokemon fainting. There were a lot of impressive performances in Week 5, but the MVP has to go to Hopper the Politoed. Getting imprisoned on the first turn is broken as hell, and the fact that it was able to stick around, not teleport or volt switch out, and it also landed a Fisher on top of that was just ridiculous. Mr. Diamond Chopper are runner-ups. They performed very great as well, but Hopper almost single-handedly gave its team a 4-0 win, which is fantastic. Absolutely MVP caliber stuff. Here are the standings after the week five battles. The Bolt Strikers are now the sole undefeated team and the favorite for the number one seed. The Mist Mavens and Intimidation now have winning records, while well, the Leaf Guardians and Hive Mind fell to losing records. The Entry Hazards finally have their first win, keeping their playoff hopes alive, while the Dragon Knights are still winless. If the Dragon Knights do not win today, they cannot make playoffs, and their season will effectively be over. So that covers all the intro stuff, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel since 67% of this channel's viewers are not subscribed. So subscribe to this channel, MJTV Plays, please. And let's dive in to week six of MNJTV's Metronome League. Our first battle is the 0-5 Dragon Knights versus the 1-4 Entry Hazards. If the Entry Hazards are able to win this, it will dramatically increase their chances of making it into the playoffs. If the Dragon Knights do not win this, they are not going to playoffs, as every other team would then have two wins and they would have zero with only one week remaining in the season. So this is a must win match for the Dragon Knights. Gex goes first and gets Ice Fang. Neutral damage onto Abdonis does not get the freeze. Hail. Hail, yeah, indeed. Both sides of this battle have an ice type Pokemon that will not take damage from the hail. Those two Pokemon actually being Mr. Prime and Mr. Dime. Seed Bomb! Is that on the Gex? It is! Fantastic move by Mr. Dime! Big damage onto Gex already. Not a great start for the Dragon Knights. And Abdonis gets a Leaf Tornado. 
On to Gex as well. Back to back. Super effective grass moves onto Gex, and the Dragonites are already down a Pokemon. What an incredible start for the entry hazards. They are intent on not giving the Dragon Knights their first win today. But as I was saying before, that incredible back-to-back -back grass move combo. Mr. Dime and Mr. Prime are siblings, both the child of Mr. Time, the MBF champion. Mr. Prime gets reversal. This shouldn't do very much. It's neutral on Mr. Dime, but reversal does more damage the less HP you have. And uh, Mr. Prime is still pretty healthy. Happy hour from Didi. Everyone's caught up in the happy atmosphere. I'm not sure they are, Didi. This is a tough battle here between two siblings. This is make or break for these two teams. Fire spin onto Didi was a great move. Foul play. This is super effective on either Pokemon. Big damage on Mr. Prime. Used Mr. Prime's own attack stat against it. Probably would have done more if it was a regular dark move. But still, the entry hazards are rolling right now. The fire spin on DD is going to wear it down. One of the Dragonite's Pokemon is already down. And with one big foul play, Mr. Prime is going to be forced to rest on the bench. While the entry hazards still have both of their Pokemon in green HP. With the two in the back not even having touched the field. Didi gets a bullet punch onto Mr. Dime. That's super effective. Bit of damage there. Mr. Dime goes next and gets Dragon Dance. Ooh, setting up and bolstering its lesser attack stat, being the physical attack. Feels confident that it's going to get to stick around and do some big damage. Adonis moves next and gets Quiver Dance. Oh, do we have a new dancing duo over there on the Entry Hazard side? The Dragon Dancer and the Quiver Dancer. Two dancing setup moves in the same turn by the Entry Hazards. They intend to do some damage. Like they already have. Abdonis with two KOs already. And a big grass move from Mr. Diamond to Gex. And a fire spin onto Didi, which isn't one big hit at once, but as it adds up, it really wears a Pokemon down. Mr. Dime gets Fire Pledge. The Ice type using the Fire move. Decent chunk of damage there. On to Sprinkles. DD moves next. Gets Peck. On to Abdonis. It's super effective. Bit of damage there. And Abdonis now into yellow HP. Sprinkles gets Automatize. 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 Auto. Automatize. No. Auto. That said autotomize. Did it? Am I? What was that word? Psych up. Ooh, not what they wanted Abdonis to get there because it just lost all of its quiver dancing boosts. What is, is it? Is it? What? Is it just automize? Automize is a word. What is, what is the Pokemon? It's Autotomize. What? What is this? Autotomize? What, what, how is, what is that? Oh, well, the, the, Automize is the word, but a Pokemon calls it Autotomize. Refers to uh, auto to me, the ability of certain animals to deliberately shed parts of their own body. Oh, I should focus on the battle. Sprinkles gets Aqua Ring. What is it? It's, it's gears. What part of its butt? Oh, because it's moving faster. It's shedding weight. It's getting faster. Okay, so try attack from Mr. Diamond to Dee, and that's almost a KO, but the hail will finish it this turn. Or the fire spin. Is the fire spin still going? I wasn't looking at the battle. Body slam onto Snackinole. That's good damage. When did that switch happen? I apologize, people. This this automat auto thing is just it's really throwing me for a loop here. I've always thought it was automatize. Not autotomize. Or I actually thought it was automize. Well anyways, DD goes down to the fire spin as 
Uh, I actually said it would go down to the hail, but the hail ended, but the fire spin was still around. The Dragon Knights are in a bit of a pickle here. And a totemized pickle. Very fast pickle, it's shed part of its body. Flying press! Will this be on to? We'll be on to Snackinold, and that is super effective, and Snackinold is already down to just yellow HP. About two turns after coming into the battle. Ice Shard, stab, move. On to Sprinkles, it's super effective. Massive damage, but Sprinkles holds on. Mr. Dime performing excellently today. Will Mr. Prime be able to answer? Vacuum Wave, fighting move. On to Mr. Dime, neutral damage does not do very much damage, and Snackinold is fully paralyzed. Sprinkles healing from the Aqua Ring, though, which I did not see before because I was learning about autotomy. Autotomy, or self-amputation, is the behavior whereby an animal sheds or discards one or more of its own appendages. So then why is the animation, like, gears spinning and sparks flying? I don't really understand that. I feel like it should be a shedding skin. Anyways, Barry comes in, screech. Sprinkles gets screech immediately onto Barry, who will now be forced to stick around here with harshly lowered defense. Which isn't great, its defense isn't that good to begin with, but Mr. Dime's still here, and gets Belly Drum. Ooh, this will get its HP very low. I don't know if it'll have a chance to take advantage of that maximum attack, we'll see. Mr. Prime gets to move and gets Smackdown. On to its brother, and Mr. Prime is the brother that is the last one standing. But will Mr. Prime's team be? Ill-advised belly drum from Mr. Dime leads to his brother, Mr. Time. Excuse me, Mr. Prime, taking it out. Snackinold comes back in. Sprinkles. Now the fastest Pokemon in the field gets Octazooka. Will this be an accuracy drop? Yes, it will. Ooh, entry hazards. Probably keen on switching Barry out soon. Minus two defense, minus one accuracy. Not great. Mr. Prime tried to swallow, but it didn't have a beverage. Ah, Barry will not be switching out because it's flying. Now, will this fly land due to the dropped accuracy? If it lands, it probably KOs something. Horn Drill! Snackinold lands a Horn Drill! and finishes off Mr. Prime with an Oko move that probably was not necessary. Sprinkles getting healthier though as time goes along thanks to the Aqua Ring. It was down to barely any HP, but now it's back up to 43 out of 160. Sprinkles moves, gets Sludge Bomb, not onto the Fairy type, onto Snackinold, but Snackinold holds on. Barry gets Fly and doesn't miss. And Sprinkles holds on with 5 HP. The Dragon Knights are not going down without a fight. Snackinold gets in grain. It'll be doing its own turn by turn healing. One with water, one with plant. Entry hazards are probably keen on finishing this as soon as they can. Sprinkles, just one decent hit. The longer they wait to do it, the healthier Sprinkles gets due to Aqua Ring. Deal with Sprinkles being faster though. Bone Meringue! On to Snackinold, will this finish it? It will! Snackinold goes down and now it's just Barry and Abdonis up against Sprinkles. But Barry might be able to finish it here. It gets a Bug Buzz. This is, I believe, four times resisted. And it's not enough! Sprinkles still holding on. Are we about to see an insane comeback here? Abdonis comes back in after its lengthy rest on the bench. It's in favor of the entry hazards, but we've seen similarly impressive comebacks. Sprinkles gets grassy glide, physical grass move. Big chunk of damage onto Barry there. What will Barry do? Gets Quiver Dance, setting up, which is not something I think the Entry Hazards want to be doing right now. 
Abdonis has a chance to end this and get its third KO. Triple Axel! Physical Ice Move 1 will be enough, and it is over for the Dragon Knights. The entry hazards improve to 2 and 4, dramatically increasing their playoff chances, and the Dragon Knights, still winless, are now officially eliminated from getting into the playoffs. Our next match is the 3 and 2 Intimidation up against the 2 and 3 Hive Mind. The Intimidation are fresh off another one of their what's becoming signature comebacks, and they have a 3 and 2 record, and they'd like to keep that record a winning one. Meanwhile, the Hive Mind are 2 and 3 and would like to improve to at least something neutral. They had a winning record after week three, but have lost two straight. Adventure moves first, gets fake out. Actually on the first turn, it's on the field, so it's gonna work. And it's a crit. Good chunk of damage there onto Xander, who will now flinch. Pretty solid first move there for the Hive Mind. Springbok moves next and gets Water Shuriken onto Adventure. Now you'll see that Springbok and Gold here uh, Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, you might assume they are brothers or workout buddies. They've never met. This is their first time ever interacting. Um, I Maybe they'll be friends, I don't know. But another water move coming out from a Hitmon. Water Shuriken from Hitmonlee, then Hydro Pump from Hitmonchan. Adventure. Gets scratched this time onto Springbok. Takes it reasonably well. Pollen Puff. Ah, special bug move onto Aventure. It's a neutral hit and that is massive damage. Getting it back for that fake out last turn. Anchor Shot. This will be on to hit Monchan. The first battle interaction between the two Hitmons who have never met before. Arm thrust, this is a stab move onto Xander, but it, Xander resists it, wrong target there. Doesn't do much damage, would have done more onto Springbok. Looks like the Intimidation are weighing whether they should switch out Xander or not. They wanna keep Xander in. Seems they are opting to keep it in while the Hive Mind will be switching out Aventure since it has gotten low, bringing in Luna. Might be able to get some stab strong damage on Hitmonlee. Darkest Lariat. The spinny top move, and that was a good switch by the Hive Mind. That probably would have KO'd Aventure, but instead Luna takes a resisted hit. And now it's time for Hail. Can I get a Hail Yeah? Neither team has an ice type Pokemon. So all but Clefable, actually, no, I take that back. Both Xander and Luna have Magic Guard. They cannot be harmed by the hail. So the only two Pokemon taking recurring damage from this will be Springbok and Gold. Ah, but it seems, I think I just saw the Intimidation input the decision to withdraw Xamder. Xamder wouldn't take damage from the hail, but I guess they decided it was getting a bit too low on HP for comfort. Springbok moves next, gets Body Slam, good physical move. On to gold, and gold is down. Springbok proving itself the superior Hitmon today. Luna now moves and gets Octo Lock. Intimidation dealing with Octolock again, and Springbok will be getting frailer and frailer as the turns go on. Let's see who the Hive Mind will be sending in next. I anticipate Chanel. And I was right. Chanel, totally healthy, does have Aroma Veil but there's no Curse Body Pokemon. Aroma Veil still protects from Disable and Taunt and Torment, but it's less important to preserve the Aroma Veil Pokemon for the Curse Body Pokemon if there are no Curse Body Pokemon. Hypnosis coming from Springbok lands on Luna, and Luna will be taking a Nappy Wappy. Good night, Moon. 
Chopper gets false swipe. This cannot KO, but it's a not much damage. I actually thought it would do a bit more than that. I suppose it's not a very strong move. Let's see what Chanel will do. Chanel gets Swift. This will be some damage on both of the Intimidation's Pokemon. Good chunk of dam uh, damage. It was a crit on Chopper. It was quite a bit of damage on Springbok. I thought the crit was on Springbok. Luna over there. Content with its nappy wappy. Not bothered by the large chunks of ice falling onto its head due to the fact that it is guarded by magic. Let's see what Springbok is able to do here. It gets Flip Turn. Flip Turn, the new Isle of Armor water type move. It's essentially a water type U-turn and that allows Springbok to bypass the Octolock trap and get its defenses back. That was an excellent move for Springbok to get there. Now, no longer has to worry about Octolock dropping its defenses and making it frailer. Chopper looking to set up. Boosting its special attack, special defense, and speed with a Quiver Dance. It was already dancing a little bit. Just a little... Looks like it might be a bit shy about its dancing, but it is dancing. Fusion Flare, special fire type move on to Thanatos. And that was a good chunk of damage there, about a third of its total HP. Hail still buffeting all of the Pokemon on the field. I don't know how many more turns of this are left. I would assume just one. I feel like it's been a while. Has it been a while for anyone else? Chopper, the fastest Pokemon on the field, now gets Blaze Kick. Strong physical move, and Luna is low, still sleeping. The story of Luna this season is dealing with status conditions for a long time. Crunch from Thanatos, this will be resisted. So not much damage onto Chanel. Luna was a first round pick, but her performance has been underwhelming this season. Lots of turns of just either being frozen for a long time or sleeping for a long time. Paralyzed, getting shell smashed, but then not attacking. Luna really needs to step it up if she wants to be the leader of the hive mind that she was intended to be. Luna does not switch out. Looks like the hive mind need her to wake up. Chopper gets moonlight. Gonna get some of that HP back, a lot of that HP back, and Chopper's back to full. And Luna finally wakes up. Let's see what it will do here. Sandstorm. Well, we got rid of one recurring damaging weather. And now we have another. And I hate Sandstorm. It makes it so much harder to get nice thumbnail screenshots. Thanatos gets Thundershock. Not much damage onto Chanel there, but does paralyze it. Pretty good move there by Thanatos. Chanel moves next. Final Gambit and Chanel is down, but it will do a lot of damage in the process. Chopper back down to only about a quarter HP. Would have fainted if it hadn't healed. But the Hive Mind are now two versus four. Is that right? Yes, because gold is down. Yes, it's two versus four. The Hive Mind are up against the ropes here. Adventure's gonna be dealing with Sandstorm damage, both of the Hive Mind's Pokemon are in red HP. Wow, this is a really tough spot for the Hive Mind. Adventure gets Trick Room. Interesting, so I think Luna will now be the fastest Pokemon on the field aside from Adventure. Prankster, of course. But, oh, I'm wrong, Thanatos. Thanatos gets to move first now. Speed Swap, never mind. Okay, I now have no idea what the move order is because the speed swapping and the trick room have completely thrown me for a loop here. Luna is tickling. Apparently punching frogs are indeed ticklish. Chopper gets to move next. Gets guillotine, ah, but targets the ghost type. And Adventure holds on for another turn. Luna not worn down by the sandstorm due to its magic guard ability. This is fascinating. All of 
the Intimidation's Pokemon are still standing, but they're all in about red, or excuse me, yellow HP. So while the Hive Mind are in a very tough spot, I don't think it's out of reach for them. Because with strong enough moves, they could take out the opposing Pokemon. Venture gets Tickle. Two Tickles. Is that consecutive tickling? It tickled one Pokemon. It switched out. Another one was brought in, and they tickled that one. Grudge from Thanatos. If one of the opposing Pokemon KOs at this turn, they will lose all of their Metronome PP, but they should get it back from their Lepa Berries. Luna gets Power Swap. I believe this is just the changes. So this, I don't think, does anything. I don't think either of them had their attack or special attack impacted. Adventure, close to falling. Sandstorm wearing it down. Luna holding on, though. The Magic Guard not impacting it. What will Adventure do? Rising Voltage! Will this be enough to KO something? No, it will not! That move does double damage on Electric Terrain, but we do not have Electric Terrain right now. Ooh, Thanatos Reflect Type reflects the type of Sableye and is now a Dark Ghost Dusk Noir with three immunities. Clear Smog, this will remove the stat changes of the target, and Springbok has those stat changes from Tickle removed but it is close to falling to Sandstorm damage. Aura Sphere, this is Stab. It is onto Clefable though, who lives with barely a sliver. If it didn't have Magic Guard, the Sandstorm would take it out. I'm sure the Intimidation want this battle over soon so that they can get a plus four differential. Ah, but it seems they're choosing to switch out Springbok in favor of Xander, because Springbok would faint to Sandstorm this turn. Xander will not because of Magic Art. Oh, they're switching both. Because I think both Pokemon are in range of Sandstorm damage. I'm not sure about Thanatos. Springbok certainly is. But it looks like they're trying to bring in the little bit of healthier Pokemon. Let Aventure fall to the Sandstorm damage this turn. Hope it doesn't do anything. And then let Luna, just hope Luna doesn't do anything. Adventure gets Electro Ball. This is on to Xander, who tanks it. Would have been a lot more to Polyrath. The Intimidation are grateful for that. Clefable gets Pollen Puff. Special bug move onto Xander. That's super effective, and Xander is down. Will not get to be protected from Sandstorm damage with Magic Guard this turn. Oh, and it subsides. The Intimidation seem to have Neglected to check how much Sandstorm was left. The Intimidation did that. So somehow, we now have three, well, Chopper's not in red HP, but it's close. Somehow the Hive Mind's Pokemon are still standing after all this time. I, I must say, admirable effort for them by holding on. Adventure gets Fire Fang, is this gonna KO something? Nope, targets Chopper, who resists it? Now it's three red HP Pokemon versus two red HP Pokemon. Happy hour, ooh, not what the Intimidation want to see. Now Luna's gonna have a chance to KO something or both of them. I think it's a double hit move like Hyper Voice. Gets Steel Wing onto Chopper who resists it and holds on. This might be the least total HP I've seen among four Pokemon. Hammer Arm, Stab Move, Onto Luna, resists it, but doesn't matter, Luna's down. Just one Pokemon stands in the way of the Intimidation getting a 3-0 win. Adventure might somehow pull this off if it's able to heal here, though. Gets Rock Smash. And KO's Chopper. Is Aventure gonna be able to pull this off? Let's see if Thanatos finishes it here. Throat chop, nope, it's over. A valiant effort by Aventure and Luna, but the Intimidation emerge victorious with two Pokemon left standing. Next up, we have the two and three Leaf Guardians 
versus the 4-1 Shadow Storm. The Leaf Guardians have lost two straight and want to snap that losing streak, while the Shadow Storm just recently lost their undefeated status to the Bolt Strikers. So both of these teams are very interested in getting a strong, a strong defining win today. Buster moves first. Fastest creature on the field gets Burning Jealousy. Burning Jealousy burns all Pokemon that have had their stats boosted at some point in the turn. But since that was the first move, that's not the case. Petal Dance from Dexter. This is a strong move. On to Buster. And it's going to keep attacking at least one more time. I bet they're excited about that. Oh, the Ar Armando gets Sleep Powder onto Dexter. Never mind. It will not continue pedal dancing, for Dexter is taking a nappy wappy. Synchronize does not activate. Synchronize does not work on sleep. Jazz Hands gets Grass Knot onto Armando. Does a bit of damage there. And the first turn is complete with no KOs. Let's see what Buster does with this turn. Thunder Wave, but it fails. It targets Dexter. Can't be paralyzed if you're sleeping. The Nappy Wappy protected it. Armando gets Wood Hammer. Oh, this is a strong physical move. Squishing Jazz Hands the Rampaging like a bug. Big damage there. Armando does have to take some recoil from it though. Lash out. New Isle of Armor move from Jazz Hands. Doubles power if the user has had their stats dropped in that turn, but Jazz Hands the Rampaging's stats had not been dropped, so it was just the regular 75 power. Cool looking move though. Brutal swing, this is super effective on both of the Leaf Guardians. KOs Jazz Hands the Rampaging and big damage on Dexter. And not much damage onto Armando because Armando resisted the move. That was a fantastic, fantastic move for Buster to get there. Wow, great move there, Armando gets Twister. This is more damage onto Dexter. I don't know if it'll KO. It will not, but it's a crit and Dexter is now asleep and almost down. This went from a somewhat even match to very much in favor of the Shadow Storm quite quickly. A brutal swing was, dare I say, brutal. Buster gets Horde Attack, a stab normal move. On to Dexter, and Dexter is down. The Leaf Guardians are already down to just two Pokemon when they haven't even gotten any of the Shadow Storm's Pokemon to below half health. Armando gets Power Swap. I don't, this doesn't do anything. There were no physical attack changes. Pardon, I was drinking water. Snacks gets Mega Punch though, lands it, and now doesn't KO Armando, came close though. All right, so now the Shadow Storm have one Pokemon in the red. Oh, Buster is below half. My apologies, I thought uh, I missed that <laughs> detail. But the Shadow Storm certainly have the advantage right now with four Pokemon still standing. They don't choose to switch. Leaf Tornado from Smiley on to Buster, and it is not enough to KO. Buster holds on and will get to do another move. Buster gets Last Resort, which does not work if summoned by Metronome. Armando gets Tackle. It hits Snacks for a bit of damage there, and Snacks will move last. Snacks gets Mud Shot onto... Buster and Buster is down. Leaf Guardians are still behind, but they are now less behind as they have taken out one of the Shadow Storm's Pokemon. Armando is still there though. I have a strong feeling that the Shadow Storm will opt to switch this turn. Probably what we're waiting on them to input here. Yes, and there it goes. Armando taking a rest on the bench while Frosting comes in. So now it's Frosting and Kirina versus Smiley and Snacks. Thunder Punch. Ooh, is this gonna be onto Frosting? No, it's not, it's onto Kirina, but it does big damage to Kirina's lower physical defense. 
Foul play. This is a fantastic move for for Kirina. Huge damage to Smiley, but Cursed Body activates. The Shadow Storm can switch though. Actually, no, they can't because they just switched out a. Uh, they just switched out Machamp. Fire Blast onto Frosting. So, Kirina has to stay in this turn due to the switching rules. But Foul Play was fantastic. Kirina has poor physical attack, but Foul Play uses the target's physical attack, and that's why it did so much damage. Muddy Water misses both. Kirina is forced to struggle, does not do very much damage to Snacks, does recoil onto itself. Frosting, doing its first move of the battle, gets Future Sight. Ooh. Target snacks though, would have been big damage onto Smiley, but Smiley may not even last that long. That foul play really knocked it down. Snacks gets Whirlpool onto Kirina. Kirina is trapped and will struggle itself down. What a clutch move by Snacks there. Kirina was surely about to switch out from the Cursed Body, but now Whirlpool is trapped and Kirina has to struggle here. The Leaf Guardians might be able to bring this back. Because Kirina's going down this turn, and then Armando has red HP. Mud Slap onto Kirina. Drops its accuracy. I don't know if Struggle can miss, though. Well, if it can, it doesn't. Smiley now very low, but Kirina is down. It is now... Mostly healthy Snacks, mostly healthy Frosting versus Red HP Smiley and Red HP Armando. The Leaf Guardians have made it even. Ooh. But the Shadow Storm get a great move there. Poisoning Snacks can't poison Gengar. But Snacks is gonna start to get worn down by that String Shot. Not what they need, they needed a hit. Frosting will be slower, but not sure they really care about that. And it may not even be slower than Snacks. Oh, of course, and the future side is coming in. That's gonna be big damage onto Snacks. The Leaf Guardians have to end this soon. Or that future side is going to cause problems. Or they need to heal. Future side also, I believe, has a chance to miss. Smiley needs a big move here, gets Aromatic Mist. Smiley be stinky. Boosting the special defense of Snacks. Okay, so it will take the future sight better. What will, what will Armando do here? X Scissor! Onto Snacks, big damage. Doesn't KO, but the poison will. Frosting, Flame Wheel, this is KOing something. Flame Wheel targets Smiley. Smiley is down, and uh, the battle is absolutely over. Unless Snacks is able to heal here. It does not. A failed court change, and the future side hits. Snacks is down, and the Shadow Storm improved to 5-1, when well, the Leaf Guardians have now lost three straight. Our next match is the 3-2 Mist Mavens versus the still undefeated Bolt Strikers. The Mist Mavens are fresh off an incredibly dominant victory over the Hive Mind, have an excellent differential as a result. And a win here would be huge for them. Possibly even getting them into the top two. But the Bolt Strikers want to keep that record perfect. They're going to try to stop the Mist Mavens from doing that. Dragon Claw from Chad will not do anything to two Fairy types. So the first move of the battle doesn't do anything. Aurora Beam from Tinker hits Hopper, who resists it. Not much damage there. Rush moves now. Rush has been in... Dark Horse threatened, gets Earthquake. Will hit every Pokemon on the field. Massive damage to Chad. Less damage to Hopper and Tinker. Hopper gets Ice Beam. On to Rush, and that is a good chunk of damage there. So all Pokemon on the field took some damage in that first turn. Seems the Mist Mavens are gonna try and bench Chad because it's already down to very low HP. They want something in that can tank the hits better. So in comes Bermuda. 
Tinker now the fastest. Get uses Charge. If it gets an electric move on the next turn, it will be powered up. But that's unlikely. The main benefit is the boost to its special defense. Next is Rush, who gets Heavy Slam. Ah, uh, this should not do very much damage. Hits Blissey, does some damage to Blissey's poor defense, but I'm pretty sure Rush is a relatively light Pokemon. Floral Healing from a Hopper, which I actually, it heals the target. I had it mixed up with another flower related move. And that was essentially just Heal Pulse. Tinker's back to full, the Bolt Strikers say thank you. Now take this, Sand storm. <sighs> Sand storm. Well, every Pokemon in the field is going to be taking some damage from this. I believe the only Pokemon on either of these teams that doesn't take damage from Sandstorm is Chad, and I certainly don't want to bring Chad back in. Facade from Rush onto Bermuda. More physical damage. Bermuda It's all ready to half health. Hopper gets recycle, which fails. You can't recycle something that is yet to be cycled at all. Vice Grip from Bermuda Stab, but a physical move. Rush takes that well due to the poor physical attack of Bermuda. We see the Sandstorm making its rounds on the field, and we are going to have to deal with this for a while. So that's it's wonderful. Everybody loves Sandstorm. Mucking up potential thumbnail screenshots. Tinker. Gets fake tears. This harshly lowers the special defense of the target. Cry me a river indeed in Bermuda. Might be switching out soon. It needs that special defense. Although if it gets hit by this hammer arm. No, it hits Hopper who survives. But the Mist Mavens are in a tough spot. Three of their four Pokemon are in yellow HP. Hopper gets Ice Shard onto Rush. Bit of damage there, but not the big hit that the Mist Mavens need. They need to heal. Cross Poison, this will be super effective, but it's a physical move. On to Tinker. Did not do, considering it's a high power physical move, that did not do very much, as most know. Blissey's and Chansey's are not known for their physical attack. Actually, they're known for it. They're known for how low it is. Bermuda switching, they want that special defense back, and they're leaving Hopper in. Suppose the Mist Mavens don't think that switching in Kadabra would accomplish much since it is also very low. So the last fully healthy Pokemon for the Mist Mavens, Hellion Spawn the Grim Snarl comes in. Rush is getting switched out. And in comes Disco, the Ludicolo, who has been very reliable in this league as have most of the Bolt Strikers, if not all of them. Gear Grind! Gear Grind's super effective on the Hellion Spawn! That's just one hit! If it is a third time, Hellion Spawn is down? No, it's just two times, but the Bolt Strikers are dominating! No KOs yet, but every Mist Maven is below half, and Hopper gets in prison for the second week in a row! But will it change the momentum because Hopper is so low on health and the Sandstorm is continuing to wear it down. Struggle severely harms the user, but it also is damage. The Imprison may have come too late. Bone Rush. Ah, but it targets the wrong Pokemon. Disco resists ground. And the three hits do not do very much damage. Tinker now struggling. It's Hellion Spawn who survives but may fall to Sandstorm. Hopper gets Crush Claw. Lands it on Tinker and that's a KO. So the first KO of the battle is actually the Mist Mavens. And there's the second, it's three and three. All of the Mist Mavens will be struggling, but they don't have to do much damage to Hopper to end this. And both of the Pokemon left for the Mist Mavens, I don't know how well they'll take a struggle. 
this in prison may not actually be the best thing for the Mist Mavens. Would have been great if it came earlier, as they saw last week. But now... We'll see. This is interesting. If Hopper's able to heal, though, that could seal the win for the Mist Mavens. Hopper gets soaked. Not what they needed. Ludicolo loses its grass type, and that is all that that does. Disco struggles. It's Bermuda. Does not KO. Disco's getting low, though. Bermuda down to red. Gets Gyro Ball. This will not do very much as Bermuda outspeeds Roy Boss. Roy Boss struggles, and Bermuda's down. The Bolt Strikers have now KO'd two Pokemon with struggle. And the Sandstorm subsides, so Hopper is still standing, but the Mist Mavens are in a tough spot still. It's possible it would have been better for the Mist Mavens to switch out and get rid of the Imprison so that there was a lower chance for the Bolt Strikers to actually get damage. Because now with Struggle, they're guaranteed damage. Too late now, though. Hopper gets Psychic Terrain again, not the healing it needs. They want, if the Mist Mavens want to win this, Hopper has to heal, and I'm... Not sure it's gonna get that chance. Disco lands the struggle, Hopper is down. And it takes out Disco in the process. Roy Boss might end it here with the struggle. And it does. The Bolt Strikers take a 2-0 win, KOing all of the Mist Maven's Pokemon using struggle they really are unstoppable thanks so much for watching this week of m and jtv's metronome league stay tuned for next week which is the last week of the regular season but that's all i have for now so till next time it ends gotta catch them all